After Anna Mikhailovna and her son had gone to Count Bezukhoi's, the Countess Rostova sat for some time alone, applying her handkerchief to her eyes. At last she rang the bell. "'What is the matter with you, my dear?' she demanded severely of the maid, who had kept her waiting several minutes. "'Don't you care to serve me? If not, I can find another place for you.' The Countess was greatly affected by her old friend's grief and humiliation, and therefore she was out of sorts, as could be told by her speaking to the maid by the formal we, you, and milia, dear. "'Beg pardon,' said the girl. "'Ask the Count to come to me.' The Count came waddling to his wife with a rather guilty look, as usual. "'Well, little Countess,' "'What a sauté of Madeira of Woodcock we are going to have, ma chère. "'I have been trying it. "'Terra's is well worth the thousand roubles that I give for him. "'It was well spent.' "'He took a seat near his wife, with an affectation of bravery, "'leaning one hand on his knee, and with the other rumpling up his grey hair. "'What do you wish, little countess?' "'See there, my love. "'How did you get that spot on you?' she said, pointing to his waistcoat. "'It is evidently some of your sauté,' she added with a smile. "'See here, Count, I need some money.' His face grew mournful. "'Ah, little Countess!' And the Count made a great ado in getting out his pocket-book. "'I want a good deal, Count. I want five hundred roubles.' And she took her cambric handkerchief and began to rub her husband's waistcoat. "'You shall have it at once.' "'Hey, there!' cried the Count, in a tone used only by men who are certain that those whom they command will rush headlong at their call. "'Send Metenka to me.' Metenka, the nobleman's son whom the Count had brought up, and had now put in charge of all his affairs, came with soft, noiseless steps into the room. "'See here, my dear,' said the Count, to the deferential young man as he entered the door. "'Bring me—' He hesitated. Yes, bring me seven hundred roubles. Yes, and see here, don't bring such torn and filthy ones as you do sometimes, but clean ones. They are for the countess. Yes, Matenka, please see that they are clean, said the countess with a sigh. Your Excellency, when do you wish them? asked Matenka. You will deem to know that— However, don't allow yourself to be uneasy— he added. Perceiving that the Count was already beginning to breathe heavily and rapidly, which was always a sign of a burst of rage, I had forgotten. Will you please to have them this instant? Yes, yes, instantly. Bring them. Give them to the Countess. What a treasure Matinka is, he added with a smile as the young man left the room. He never finds anything impossible. That is a thing I cannot endure. All things are possible. Ah, money, Count, money. How much sorrow it causes in the world, exclaimed the Countess. But this money is very important for me. Little Countess, you are a terrible spendthrift, declared the Count, and kissing his wife's hand, he disappeared again into his own apartment. When Anna Mikhailovna returned from her visit to Buzikoy, the money— all in new clean banknotes, was laying on a stand under a handkerchief in the countess's room. Anna Mikhailovna noticed that the countess was excited over something. "'Well, my dear?' asked the countess. "'Oh, he's in such a terrible state. You would never know him. He is so ill, so ill. I stayed only a short minute, and didn't say two words. "'Annette, "'For heaven's sake, don't refuse me,' suddenly exclaimed the countess, taking out the money from under the handkerchief, while her old, thin, grave face flushed in a way that was strange to see. Anna Mikhailovna instantly understood what she meant, and was already bending over so as to embrace the countess gracefully at the right moment. "'It is from me to Boris, for his outfit,' Anna Mikhailovna interrupted her by throwing her arms around her and bursting into tears. The countess wept with her. They wept because they were friends, 
and because they were kind-hearted, and because, having been friends from childhood, they were now occupied with such a sordid matter as money, and because their youth had passed. But theirs were pleasant tears. End of chapter 15